What's going on guys, I'm VaporKnight13 and welcome to my second Space Engineers tutorial. Now, um, the, I'm not, I'm probably not going to be able to make a lot of Space Engineers tutorials very quickly just because it is still an alpha and there isn't a great deal of uh, things I can, yeah, that are uh, massively complicated. A lot of these things are not complicated at all. Um, I'm going to show you pretty much everything, or I'm going to show you some, um, uh, over, um, the last video, god damn it, I got, uh, the last video we learned the, or maybe a little, uh, maybe even a little bit more than the basics of how to use, uh, of how to actually play Space Engineers. Right now, we are going to go over the, um, the slightly more complex things of Space Engineers. Um, so we're going to be looking or learning about conveyors, solar panels, collectors, connectors, ejectors, God damn it, that's so freaking long. Okay, so yeah, so um, so let's start out with the solar panel. The solar panel is what you would think, rather than using reactors, you can use a solar panel on your ship. Now, if you're gonna use solar panels, my suggestion is to use a solar, at least, um, at least like two or three solar panels on each side based on you know how big your ship is. Uh, if it's a super small ship, go with like one if you can. Um, like one on each side, I mean, not just one, but on a super massive cruiser, you're going to need as many as you can, because frankly, uh, yeah, I mean, those ships use up a lot of power. Now, the solar panels really only work if they're facing the sun, as you may imagine. Um, now, the sun, it, it's permanently stuck there, because, you know, we are in space, we're not on Earth, where, you know, it's a sun-moon rotation. So the sun is always there. Um, it never moves, which I guess in a way makes sense, but, um, so yeah, it never moves, but your ship is going to, so say you're, um, so, you know, so this wouldn't work constantly if I were to just have the solar panel here, so if, um, so say I, if I were under something, then the solar panels wouldn't work. It's always nice to have at least a couple reactors just to back it up, just think, just for those times where solar, you can't use solar panels. But solar panels are very efficient. I don't use them uh, often. I don't know why, but I don't use them. Um, so yeah, I mean I'm going to because frankly, I don't know. I just never really put them on any of my vehicles. I should have, but I don't. It's weird. Anyways, I recommend using solar panels as often as possible to save, um, you know, to save fuel. Now, unfortunately, we're in an empty world, so I can't. Um, so what I'm about to show you. Um, you can't physically see how it works, but I'm going to explain it as much as in detail as possible. As yeah, with as much detail as possible. So let me take that out. So now, as you can see here, we got a we got not much of a setup. So we got a cargo bay, or not a cargo bay fail. Uh, we got a cargo container, a small one. We got two. Um, two conveyors, not conveyors, two conveyor tubes, yeah, a collector and a connector, as well as a small ship. Now, the only reason I had to make a small ship was because ejectors only work for, I'm not too sure about large ships, let me check. They only work for small ships, they don't work for large ships or stations, so I had to make this just so I could show you. Um, now. You can use large conveyor tubes on small ships. I wouldn't recommend it. I really don't know why you would want to, to be quite honest. Um, but it's really cool. I mean, you know, because um, you can't use small. Um, you can use small and large on on small ships, but it, uh, you can only use large conveyor tubes on the large ships. I guess in a way that makes sense. I mean, at the same time, I think that's just you know we um. That's a little bit unrealistic because you should be able to put both on. I would imagine that you know maybe they set it up to where the large conveyor tubes work more effectively, which I guess in a way wouldn't make any sense because conveyor tubes don't work exactly how you would think. So basically, what they do, uh, let me just set up another cargo container here. I'm gonna grab my stuff from here because I tried something and it failed. All right, so basically, what the whole point of conveyor tubes—they don't transfer, um, they don't 
Well, I guess they kind of do. Um, they don't com They don't transfer objects from one convey uh, one um, cargo container to another. Not, at least on the way you think. Basically, if two cargo containers um, are connected, so normally if I were to go into this cargo container, it's got nothing in it. Actually, you know what? Screw it. Hold on. Let me put something in here. All right, so we got all of our stuff in here, all right? Cargo container number two. Now, cargo container number one over here, it's got nothing. So if, uh, so say if these two cargo containers were, um, you know, one was on one side of this massive ship, the other one was on another side, and um, maybe all your stuff is in one cargo container, but you want to access that stuff from another without actually going to that specific cargo container. What you can do, so notice there's nothing in here. This cargo container, I can't actually access the stuff that I need. However, in this one, of course I can because this stuff is actually in there. So if you connect it via conveyor tubes, now you have to make sure uh, conveyor tubes do work on, um, they do work on, you know, uh, reactor and junk. So you do have to have a reactor or something. Otherwise, you know, uh, the conveyor tubes will. So let me show you something. So notice if the conveyor tube is properly connected, and basically the yellow signal means that whatever it's con uh, whatever both sides are connected to, it's working completely operational. There are reactors; those two blocks um, can be used with the conveyor tubes. However, if it's red, that means that one at least one side of the conveyor tube uh, does not meet the requirements for. You know, using a conveyor tube, such as having a cargo uh, container here, or another cargo, uh, or another conveyor tube or conveyor. So yeah. So now what? So, so now all my stuff is in that cargo uh, cargo container, right? So I'm just this one doesn't. So now if I wanted to, if you have the conveyor connected and it's completely operational operational with that yellow um, with that yellow light then you can go into any other cargo container and you can collect the stuff that is in the other cargo container even though the stuff was not actually in this basically the way I think of it is that it um, basically you know the conveyor tubes are connected to both cargo containers if you um, you can collect stuff from that cargo container even though you're selecting this one uh, and it's kind of like it instantaneously puts it in here, like exactly when you move it into your inventory. It's like it's. I think you know maybe um, if they wanted to make it more realistic, what they should do is add like maybe a timer. So if you want to add that object um, into your inventory, if it if the object isn't in that um, single cargo container, they should. Uh, make you wait about 10 seconds or based on how many tubes it has to go through how many blocks it's got to go through because the tubes do count as blocks so yeah that's the way i think of it um i, I think they really should add some sort of delay or something to make it just a little bit more realistic so anyways that's how conveyor tubes work that's how they transfer things now they are conveyor conveyor tubes so the actual conveyors are a little bit more useful um, I think the problem about using conveyor uh, regular conveyors though I think they either use too many components or I don't know maybe they just don't look not as nice I don't I don't really know how it works basically conveyors they work the exact same way as conveyor tubes the only difference is conveyors they work on all ang uh, on all sides so notice that conveyor tubes they only have of course two sides so anything um so and i really wish they would make a a um a t-tube so you know uh, there's one side going to the uh le um to the left one side going to uh um, pointing out the right and one side pointing out the top that would make it extremely useful and i would have to use conveyors a lot less because i really do like how the tubes look i think they are a really nice addition over just using a bunch of conveyors because look at how the that's uh, frankly Tell me that doesn't look just a little bit weird. <clears throat> so now conveyor. So like I just said, conveyors work exactly like conveyor tubes. And 
I'll point something out. I should have pointed this out as soon as I started talking about conveyor tubes, but conveyor tubes, anything with this uh, little yellow mark or what, um, this little yellow thing on the side of a block. So notice how reactors have them as well. So um, ejectors have them at the back. You just can't see that one as well. Um, so a lot of different blocks have the um, this little this old door um, and basically that just means that conveyors can be uh, conveyor tubes or conveyors can be connected to yeah to them so so as you can see um, all the stuff are is in that cargo container but if I go in I can still collect the stuff because they are connected via a collector I mean con uh, conveyor sorry so conveyors work the exact same way as conveyor tubes they don't look as nice but they are um, but functionality wise they're a little bit more useful so anyways that's pretty much conveyors um, the next thing we're going to talk about is um, connectors collectors and ejectors so collectors and ejectors do exactly what you would think say you're on uh, say you've made a small ship and you've added collectors I'm pretty sure you can put collect I was going to say if you can um, collectors they do exa exactly as they say so say you make a mining ship um, and you know, you're mining and you don't want to get out of your ship to freaking go pick up those rocks that's a little bit stupid so what you can do is just attach a collector I don't know exactly the radius for the collector how close the block has to be for it to pick it up but it does work on the default ship uh, on pla on the platform uh, pre um, pre um, pre created map. When you're creating a map and you uh, select the plat uh, you know the one platform option, then uh, there are two ships. Uh, the one for mining has a collector. So um, collectors can be extremely useful. They're really only useful if you're creating um, a really only useful if you're creating a mining ship there is um, one other ship I can think of that would be useful say you've created a ship to um, dismantle other ships or other stations objects you know something um, you would you know you would attach a, a drill or a not a drill sorry a um, what's it called a grinder you would attach a grinder to the front of the ship you would attach a collector so that whatever um, items it drops it would be um, you know collected by the collector and now do keep in mind the collector does have its own inventory so you do not need to use the conveyor system but it I highly recommend it because they're um, because although you can't use it for big um, station, uh, yeah, you, although you can't use it for large ships or stations, the um, the collector, you know, if you use it on small tubes, it's really effective. Um, this not, has nothing to do with the tutorial, really, but I'm just gonna say it. <clears throat> um. There is, um, there was an update um, for, or a patch or an update or whatever you want to call it for space engineers. I don't completely know how to do it, but um, basically in this update, they've, um, I'm going to check actually, I completely forget. Um, here it is. So they created, um, so now there's actually a way that you can choose what color space you, you, um, you're wearing. Because before it was just randomly chosen. There's large ship drills, um, which they're not good for those giant cruisers. I don't know why on earth you would have it. Unless you're making like a, a, this huge freaking mining ship. That I could maybe understand. That would like completely clear an asteroid instantaneously. Um, and there's spectator mode, which is really useful if you're uh, doing a or you know, if you're doing a video. Um, and of course, for a tutorial, it wouldn't exactly be any good because you can't exactly place blocks. But um, I haven't tried it yet. But spectator mode is pretty useful. Oh, whoops. Oh no. All right. Next thing we're going to be talking about, ejectors. So we've already talked about collectors, and one more thing before we get, uh, get into collectors. 
I mean, um, ejectors, uh, the collectors, you can choose, um, you can choose whether or not uh, you're using the conveyor system. Now you have to make sure that this is, and now this is on by default, but you have to make sure it is on just in case you turn it off later. Um, you have to make sure it's turned on, otherwise it won't go, um, otherwise the tubes won't actually work for it, and it'll just, um, everything that collects, it'll just pile up in its own inventory. So, yeah. Um, ejectors. Basically, they work the same way as collectors, except backwards. So, they do exactly what you would think. They would, they'll grab stuff, uh, from its own inventory and just eject it. I'm gonna get in this, um, plane real quick. Now, it's weird because I'm not quite sure how this works because there is a throw out option. Now, we obviously know what that does. Or collect all. What on earth? It's an ejector, not a collector, an ejector. So why is there an option for collect all? <sighs> If I figure out what that option is, I'll tell you guys. But basically, an ejector, the main use, anyways, of it is to just eject stuff from your inventory. So now, it will just kind of rapid shoot it, or not rapid shoot it, it will automatically shoot each one, um, you know, one by one. So you got to make sure it. So as long as it's on, it will eject anything that um, it'll have in its inventory. So. I'm not actually too... Let me check real quick if it does have its own inventory. Sorry, I probably should have checked this before, but... Oops. Yes, okay, it does have its own inventory, but I think it... it can't... It, I think this one uses the conveyor system automatically. <laughs> it's kind of weird, so why does it have an option for the collectors? But, like, you need to have the option on the collectors active, but on the ejector, it's just auto. It, that's weird. I don't even know if it works like that, but I'm pretty sure that's how. Connectors, the way I've... Um, I'm not entirely sure why they have connectors, because it's a little bit... Because, or, not, not why they have connectors. It's a little bit redundant to even have a collector and an ejector when you have a connector, because collectors... Uh, here, connectors, they I th they either uh, they can be used to throw out objects or collect them, which isn't that basically the use of collector and ejector? Like, do, and I've never actually used a connector um, before um, until before this um, before I did this tutorial, so I'm quite curious as to why they even put that if they're just going to have that or vice versa. So, what up, space engineers? Like, really? Space engineers, developers, you've got exp some explaining to do. So, anyways, let's uh, continue. So, we've kind of gone over, you know, we, I've gone over this as much as I could. Um, now, there are small, con small conveyor tubes, curved tubes, and small conveyors for uh, small ships so that you don't have to use these giant ones, because... Uh, let me. So this is a conveyor on there. It looks different. Actually, it looks kind of cool. But um, now, what's cool about the conveyor for uh, for the small ships? I thought this was so cool. Um, or not, not really all that cool. Just it was smart. It was pretty smart. So what they did is notice how it's got these small ones and that's got the big ones. So that's basically saying if you um so you can convert it from large tubes to small tubes now i don't really understand why they did that i'm i am liking it but i'm not completely understanding it because i don't know why you would want to use a, a large tubes on a small ship considering regardless it's instantaneous so i don't really see the necessity of even using a large container on there i mean conveyor um I do like how you know they just gave you the option to convert it, but I really don't see the necessity, or even why you would even do that. Anyway, so let's continue. I'm not going to explain glass because it really is self-explanatory. It's just another block in the game. Um, the last thing I'm going to talk about in this tutorial is rotors. Now these are a little bit. I'm not going to say they're too complex, but. You do have to have a basic understanding of them to even use them. 
And I, I mean, I know that's kind of the th uh, that's kind of what you have to do for any block, but this one especially. So I'm just gonna grab a light armor block real quick. Basically, rotors they uh, they allow you to create cars. They allow you to create um, you know like uh, turrets for vehicles. Um, that works on a separate gyroscope. So let me show you a couple th um, things. So I'm going to create a. Oops, I'm going to create a rotor here. Ah, I forgot to change the color. I'm going to open up and just get a cockpit real quick. Uh, do I have a solar panel? You know I'll just use a solar panel. Right. Uh, not a solar panel. Now, the idea here is, you know, uh, I'm just going to... Alright, rotors. They have a lot more options than most blocks in this game. <clears throat> or most adjustable blocks in the game. Um, they've got quite a number of different uh, things you can adjust. So, rotors, they of course, they spin so they have an angle. Um, they can, you know, they, um, a velocity, a lower limit, and an upper limit. A lower limit uh, and upper limit, they're basically how much they can turn on uh, you know one direction and how much they can turn on the other velocity is obviously speed how fast the rotor uh, moves automatically braking uh, the, str uh, the strength of the braking it's pretty obvious just how um, how fast it breaks and how much braking f um, force I guess will be applied when you try to stop the you know when you try to stop the rotor and torque, basically how um, the strength of the motor, so um, how fast it will accelerate, how fast it will turn, um, you know, how hard it will be to turn. Um, so I always um, now keep in mind if you're creating uh, if you're creating a car, I'll just tell you now. I'll, I'm going to make a tutorial for how to make a car um, in one of my in one of the next videos. Uh, but I'll just tell you right on, on the spot, if you plan on making a car using rotors, you have to set the torque to nothing. That way they, uh, that way you get, you know, the wheels actually move without, um, there's nothing stopping the wheels from moving whenever, you know, they're on the ground and moving forward. So I'm going to set the torque to zero, just because I like moving this a lot. So now... Notice how we've got really crappy braking, so not really crappy, I mean, it, it's alright, but frankly, the braking could be improved, so we could always go in here. Oh, never mind, there is no braking. <laughs> so if I set that to that, then whenever I stop moving my mouse, it'll be able to brake faster. I'm going to try, I've actually never tried this, I'm going to set braking to max, and I want to see what happens. It's probably not the best thing to say in a tutorial, but pfft, whatever. So I guess it does brake slightly quicker, but... Hmm. So now, notice how... Um, I just want you guys to uh, note something. Notice how, uh, whenever I turn... now. Although it's, it, you would think it's the same ship, whenever I turn um, uh, the ship above the rotor, it doesn't actually turn the entire station. Now, the reason that is, any th um, it count it counts the rotor as a second block, and uh, crap, um, it counts the um, the top of the rotor is kind of like a second block. So. One second. So 
So it counts it kind of as two blocks. However, this top portion is counted as a second block. Now, I don't know why, but basically anything right on top of the rotor is counted as a completely different vehicle. So if you have an entirely new small ship or large ship on top of it, it will move um, it, um, gyroscope wise turning. It will it will turn on its own rather than using the entire platform's turning. Or yeah, it won't turn the entire platform. Is basically what I'm trying to say. So, which um you know which is why <clears throat> every time I turn um every time I turn this little uh, really small ship right on top of the rotor, it doesn't move the entire platform. It only moves you know. So now this is basically the um this is kind of the logic in creating a turret. Um, you know, a movable turret, right? um, because a lot of you are probably thinking, like, you know, if you want to use it. Oh, and another thing this is really good for, I never really thought about it until, ne like, just a couple seconds ago. Um, but this is perfect for passengers, because if you attach a passenger seat to a rotor, it's not technically connected to the ship. Therefore, they can't bug any of the controls or anything, so it's perfect for a passenger uh, seat. I mean, of course, they should make, they should still make a passenger seat because it's kind of ridiculous that they don't. But this is a good, um, this is a really good way to do it. Just in the meantime, so um, you know what? A real quick, the last thing I'm going to do on this tutorial is I'm going to show you exactly how you can kind of make a turret. Now, um, this uh, now this will work for small ships too, which is the cool thing. So, real quick here, I'm going to uh, so I got to create a rotor. I'm going to put a block on top. Put a rotor right here. Ah, oh, God, I hate the turning in this game sometimes. Or the rotation. There we go. Now all I've got... Um, now, because it counts it as different vehicles, you do have to... Unfortunately, you do have to put a reactor on... On uh, the vehicles that have a rotor actually connected to them, so for example, um, this one and the platform, because the plot, um, the actual station, the platform already has power. I just need to add power to here. Um, do I have a? No, I don't. Okay. Gyroscope, however, you only need to put a gyroscope on here. Actually, I'm come to think of it, I don't think you actually need to put. Never mind, I completely forgot. Sorry about that, guys. You don't actually need to put power on on these. All you have to do is make sure that the torque is low enough to you know actually turn. So let me just get out. Put a reactor on here. Now you notice. Whoops. I can turn on all axes. Oh, more or less. <laughs> I can't really roll, but there is a way to do that. Right. Okay, there isn't exactly a lot of torque or braking in that, so I'm going to increase the torque. So if I go in... I set the rotor torque to about halfway down there. Wait. What? Oh, sorry. Torque. I'm going to set torque to max and braking pretty high. Finally, I'm going to adjust this rotor over here. Braking, I'm going to turn a little bit higher. But torque, I'm going to turn down. It's not that. Because I'm not able to turn on a um, um, on the x-axis very well. But now I can because I've lowered the torque. 
This is perfect for turrets or um, I can't really think of any use for like cars or anything, but this is perfect for turrets whether you've got a car with a little turret on the back or just or this tank and maybe you want your friend to only you know to uh to only turn on the X axis uh, to only rotate left and right rather than um you know also look up and down cuz frankly on a tank it it's not completely realistic i guess it is but it is still realistic but frankly um on a massive tank like that i wouldn't really want to look up so mm, and if you only want to make them look up or down you could of course just do this put a rotor right um, right uh, where that block is and then yeah stick a cockpit on the other side of course with power in a gyroscope but you guys get what I mean so this is perfect so if I were to go over into here and just select the machine gun also uh, what we were talking oh. damn okay well it's not available for large ships Yet a missile launcher is, or a rocket launcher, whatever. Now notice how uh, now they have this on the Gatling gun too, but notice how on the rocket launcher it's got this little thing for a conveyor. Now that's for ammo. So if you want to store ammo in there without actually having to put ammo in there, it's a perfect way. Let me just do this. What I don't understand is that when you shoot a Gatling gun, you um, if you're in one of these, you actually get a little bit of kick. But if you're in a, um, but uh, but if you use a rocket launcher, you get absolutely no kick whatsoever. It's kind of stupid. Anyways, but um, this is how, that you know, that was how to use rotors and some of the more complex things on space engineers. Um, I think I might actually need to wait for them to do some more stuff because, um, besides making um. Besides teaching you guys how to make a car and how to make a turret, um, I guess I kind of already told you that I showed you that, but I'm going to make another tutorial um, on how to do the turret, just in case you didn't completely understand it. So, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Um, I really got to wait for them to do some more stuff. There are a couple other things I'm going to show in one uh, in my next video, but not a lot. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed. Please comment and subscribe. Hit that like button. It really does help, guys. Um, and I'm not signing off. Later.